Hey, good morning, fifth graders. This is Miss Johnson again. And today I'm here for our interactive read aloud. And the book that I will be sharing with you today is called Animal Talk. How Animals Communicate Through Sight, Sound, and Smell. And it's written by Etta Canner and Greg Douglas. So first I'm going to share with you the table of contents. So if you can see the table of contents, there are a couple of chapters saying an introduction, saying it with sound, saying it with a smell, body language, sending signals, lighting up, talking with humans. And so I'm not going to read this whole book. I'm going to read a couple of parts of it. But this is a really interesting nonfiction book. It gives us information about how animals communicate with each other and with humans. And so I'm gonna read the introduction. It says, how do you tell a friend that you're excited? Do you shout? Do you open your eyes wide? Do you jump up and down? If you do any of these things, you are communicating with your friend. Animals also use their voices and bodies to communicate. Some animals, such as birds, use their voices to attract a mate or to locate each other. A baby penguin can find its mother in a huge crowd of penguins just by listening for her voice. Many mammals use their bodies to greet each other. Elephants touch each other's trunk tips and lions rub their bodies together like house cats. Besides using their voices and bodies, animals also communicate in more unusual ways. Believe it or not, some animals use flashing lights made with their bodies. Fireflies flash their lights from the underside of their abdomens. Flashlight fish shine theirs from the sides of their faces. Bees communicate by dancing. Fiddler crabs by waving and many animals use smell. But no matter how animals send messages, they always seem to understand each other. And you'll get the message, too, when you read about the amazing world of animal communication. To help you understand this world, there are also activities and experiments for you to do. You'll discover how to understand the call of a blackbird, read the body language of a tiger, and signal to a firefly, and much more. Saying it with sounds. Like you, many animals communicate with their voices. Some animals use their voices to warn their group about danger. Males sing to attract females. Mothers call out to find their young. Other animals, such as the howler monkey, loudly announce the borders of their territory. But not all animals make sounds with their voices. Some use tools or unusual parts of their bodies to make noises. If you were a howler monkey, you would live in the tropical forests of South America. You would live in groups of 15 to 20 males, females and young. You would announce your territory by having a group howl every morning and evening. Your group would be heard five kilometers or three miles away. You would have a bony box in your throat that would amplify your voice or make your voice louder. And so this is a nonfiction book because it's given us information about how animals communicate. Warning. Enemies are near. Woof, 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 shouts a velvet monkey. This means a leopard is nearby. As soon as the other velvet monkeys hear this warning they scamper up trees and onto thin branches they know that a heavy leopard which can climb trees could never reach them there but what if the enemy is an eagle flying above the treetops then the signal sounds like ha 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 when vervets hear this they stick close to the tree trunks where an, e an eagle can't fly a third kind of call ch -ch 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 warns that a snake is looking for nearby dinner. This call causes vervets to stand up on their hind legs and watch the ground for their enemy. 
Vervet monkeys aren't the only animals that have different calls for different kinds of danger. The red ringed blackbird has seven alarm calls. The most common one is check, but it also uses chuck, chick, chonk, chink, peep, and cheer to warn others about enemies such as raccoons, crows, and hawks. When a California ground squirrel sees a hawk, it makes a short, loud warning chirp. But when it sees a snake, it points its tail straight up in the air and wags it quickly back and forth while making a low staccato sound. The Indian Manya bird has three kinds of danger calls. One warns about snakes. The second warns about falcons. And the third says that everything is all right once an enemy is gone. And so I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to ask you to think about how this information book is different from the one we read yesterday about America's champion swimmer. So I want you to pause for just a moment and think about how this book is present, how the author is choosing to present this information differently because it's different information that the author is trying to give the reader. Calling long distance. When an animal wants to claim a territory or advertise for a mate, it often tries to send its message over a long distance. Many animals are able to do this by calling, but some birds don't have enough loud voices to call long distances. They, either, they use either hollow or dead wood to help them communicate. The spotted woodpecker drums with its beak on a dead branch or on a telephone pole. Its beak moves so quickly that its head looks like a blur. What's the woodpecker saying? It might be calling for a mate, or it might be saying, this is my territory, stay away. These messages can be heard one kilometer or five eighths of a mile away. The huge black palm cockatoo and its mate drum together. Each bird breaks off a small twig with its claws and taps it on a hollow tree. By doing this, the pair is warning others to stay out of their territory. And then this nonfiction book has an experiment that you can do to see, to find out why dead or hollow wood carries sounds so well over long distances. Keeping track. You can likely identify your friends just by their voices. Many animals can do the same. Mothers and babies can find each other in a large noisy crowd by calling out. Mates use their voices to find each other in the dark. And groups of animals use sound to keep track of their members. After several days of feeding at sea, a mother stellar sea lion comes back to her rookery or breeding ground. The rookery has thousands of noisy sea lions in it. When the mother sea lion calls, only her pup or baby comes running toward her. Would you do as well in such a large crowd? Tawny owls hunt for food at night. A pair of owls keeps track of each other in the dark by singing the duet. The first owl sings to wit and the other one immediately answers, ooh, ooh. These sounds follow each other so closely that people used to think that only one owl was singing twit twoo. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm not going to read this whole book because I am going to stop and I'm going to ask you to think about when we've been talking about readers choosing nonfiction books that you should think about things that interest you. You should pick things that you are interested in learning about, and you should always approach the text with the anticipation to learn something new. So this is a book, I have a couple of copies of this in my room. So if this book is interesting to you and you would like to continue to learn more about how animals communicate through, through sight, sound, and smell, then you could continue to read this book in your independent reading, reading time. You can also check it out at the library. Um, 
But I want you to think about today as we're learning about text features and when you watch today's mini lesson about how the author chose to, to present this information and what text structure. Because one thing that we're going to ask you to do is think about the nonfiction books that you are reading and try to identify the text structure that the nonfiction books are being organized in. Thanks for listening and happy reading.